Okay, hopefully that works. Um, so uh, this is this particular problem where you have a certain amount of fence. In this case, we have 400 feet of fencing that we're going to use to enclose uh, a field. And in this particular one, we're going to enclose the field in a giant as a giant rectangle. And then use two other fences, and it doesn't have to be equal, uh, to partition the larger field into three smaller fields. And they indicate that these will be parallel to the shorter sides. So that's why I've made them, well, parallel to the shorter sides. Uh, the, I think the more difficult port part of this problem is setting up the equations. But the reality is, is they want to maximize the area, which means we need to maximize, we want to know the max area. And how would we calculate the area of this rectangle? Well, we would uh, use the length of the base times the height of the rectangle. And in these examples, it doesn't matter which letters you use, but if you want to follow along with the way the book would explain it, they would make this y, I believe, and make this x, so that our formula is actually, or our calculation is actually x times y. So the thing we want to maximize is this product, x times y. Now, the uh, I might be running out of room. I can't string this all the way down, so I have to fold and flip and whatnot. So uh, we need another equation. In order to maximize this, we don't know what that number is. We don't know what these two numbers are. We just know that the product has to be maximized and that the sum of these two or some sum because we don't know it's the sum of those two numbers specifically. But some sum, there's a limit based on the 400 feet of fencing. So we have an equation with three unknowns, and that's problematic. So we need another equation. And the only other equation that we could probably gather has to do with 400 feet. So if we weren't putting these two fences here, the 400 feet would be the perimeter of the rectangle. So let's think about that. The perimeter of the rectangle would equal x plus x plus y plus this y up here. And so that's the perimeter, which is going to be what? 2x plus 2y. But we have these other pieces, which are part of this 400. So really, our total fencing, let's call it f total, is equal to the perimeter plus this guy, which is also x, and this guy, which is also x. So we got another 2x. So that's going to end up being 4x plus 2y. And what is our total fencing? 400. So 400 feet. So now we have two equations, this guy and this one. I'll get another piece of paper. I'll fill this up. So we get so we have these two equations. We have uh, what was it? 400 equals 4x plus 2y, and we have some area maximum is equal to x times y. Now, whenever I get this whole idea of a maximum or minimum, there are of course different equations. But at this at this juncture. We're really talking about a parabola. If it's a maximum problem, our parabola will be inverted. In other words, we're going to have to have a negative, uh, a negative coefficient or a negative a value uh, for our lead coefficient that's on the x squared term or the independent, whatever, x squared, z squared, whatever, it doesn't matter, on our squared term. If it's a minimum problem, like we're trying to figure out the minimum number of whatever, you'd end up having a parabola that was uh, that had a positive lead coefficient so they'd be pointing upwards so that this would be an actual minimum. This is our situation here where we're trying to find the maximum value and this is the maximum area, this y value. So um, we have an equation with multiple unknowns. Let's see if we can reduce or, less, or make this least, less complicated. I'm going to solve this equation for y. And so we get 400 minus 4x equals 2y, divide both sides by 2, and I get 200 minus 2x equals y. And then I'm going to substitute this value, since it is equal to y, into that equation. So now my area max is equal to x times 200 minus 2x. Distributing, we get 200x minus 2x squared. And there's our 
negative lead coefficient. So from there, we need to understand uh, what this would look like. If we had the freedom to graph, we could graph this uh, polynomial and figure out what that would be. Uh, if we, and the other thing we could do is we could complete the square. So I'm going to do that first, and then I'm going to show you the easy way. So completing the square, we would do the following. I would factor out a negative 2 such that I would have x squared uh, minus 100. And then I would figure out what I needed to add so that my factored form would look like this. I'm sorry, I forgot an x there. Um, so it would be x minus some value, the quantity squared, and I have another value out here. So that's going to be minus 50. Why? Because before that, I would end up having, would have had this, x minus 50, x minus 50. And then prior, prior to that, I would have had this in a factored form, uh, not in a factored form, uh, x squared minus 100 x plus Twenty five hundred. Okay. By the way, this negative two is still out there. So what I had to do, what I had to do, was add twenty five hundred to this polynomial in order to create this polynomial altogether from this guy, because this value is twenty five hundred more than this value, and this is what I started out with. So I artificially added that. We didn't do example like this in class, but here's this negative two. I didn't really add twenty five hundred. I have to take that negative 2 into account. What did I actually do? This number represents a subtraction of 5,000 from this whole right-hand side of the equation. So in order to balance that out, in other words, I added 5,000, factored out the negative 2, and stuck it in here. I have to add 5,000 outside of the parentheses so that this number plus that number is equal to 0. So let's carry that all out. Now my plus 2,500 is built into this factored form, and so I have plus 5,000, which means my, vec my uh, vertex is equal to 50 comma 5,000. So at x, at x equals 50, my area max, excuse me, y value is equal to 5,000, which means my maximum area, which is xy, is equal to what, 50,000 times 5, 20, 250,000 feet. Okay. Now, what the question asks for is, what is my x and what is my y? So, we have to do x equals 50, and what is the y that goes with that x? Go back to our original equation, this guy, and put x in. Or x, oops, I want to put 50 in there. Plus 2y, solve for y. We get 400 equals, what's that, 200? Uh, and then, yeah, 200 plus 2y, subtract 200, sub, and divide by 2, and I get y equals 100. And that's what your answer is. So that, I would say, is the line of completing the square. The short way is to go back to our equation that was, what was it, uh, area max equals, what the heck was it, uh, 200 minus 2x squared, oops, 200x minus 2x squared, let's write that in standard form, so it's negative 2x squared plus 200x, and so if I think of standard form like a parabola, uh, my a value is that, my b value is that, and so you can calculate the h value directly. Many of you will have noticed that or remembered it from previous instruction, that that's equal to negative b over 2a. And you can see when I factored out the negative 2, I divided by a, and then when I divided by 2 to get the 100, oh, excuse me, to get the 50, that was that part, and there's my original b value. So we can go directly there if we don't want to complete the square and take h and do these calculations. So minus b is 200. Uh, 2 is 2, that's negative 2, and so I get positive, again, positive 50. And then take your h, put it into your equation, and get k is equal to, I'm sorry, not k, 
uh, y is equal to 100. And so my answer is 50 comma 100. Or I guess you could say 100 comma 50 because they just they're just looking for the dimensions. So 50 100 or 100 comma 50.